Okay, so we're here in Ontario at Flow Draw Lick, and what we got to do here is dial in the computer. Make sure that like the throttle mapping is done. The computer works the way that we want it to work as truckers. They're going to dial that in for us. Then we're going to send it off to testing. But first things first, we got to get this truck off the step deck. Okay, I'm going to show you what to do if you need to unload a truck off a step deck, but you don't have a loading ramp or ramps. First, you got to call your buddy Pepper to come over with his Landall trailer. Then you back that Landall up to the step deck. You can oh, see here that the Landall trailer uh, is pretty well the exact here. same height as the step Fuck deck once you drop the airbags in the step deck. Then you run around, take all the chains off, get her fired up. Well, I guess not technically fired up, it's an electric truck. You get her... You, you get the key in the on position and the air compressor going. Then what you do is you drive this truck onto the step deck. Which is always fun because we haven't done the throttle mapping right now, which means I have a ton of power and it's super easy to spin the tires. So I was trying really, really hard here not just do a burnout on the step deck loading it onto the other trailer. It is a problem. This truck has too much torque, too much power, it will spin the tires too easy. It's really, really why we got to do the throttle mapping. <laughs> then the next step, you pull the step deck back away. And then this is the cool thing about these Landall trailers. Those rear axle groups go forward with a hydraulic cylinder. When they go forward, the deck tilts up and then you're basically set up that you just reverse your truck off the step deck. And there you go. If you've got a trailer without low bed ramps, that's what you do. You hire a tow truck company with a Landall you back the step deck up to the land all, transfer the load from the step deck to the land all, and then back the vehicle off like a loading ramp. I want to give a big thanks to Pepper here, tow truck driver, real, real awesome guy. There we go. Now I'm just going to take her from the parking lot and put her inside the flow drawlic shop. Honestly, I could have edited this down for time, but I just like watching the truck drive around. Like, I'm always riding in the truck. Like, I'm always driving the truck. I never get to watch it. So I'm leaving the video footage of in here of the truck just driving around, even though it's totally not necessary or relevant to the story. Okay, so we're doing a photo shoot for the Globe and Mail right now, and I've never done posing and stuff before, but he's good. All right, you there model that's great so that's good this felt weird to do a bunch of posing with the truck i think you should not take his shirt off chase is now becoming a supermodel <laughs> honestly the globe and mail did a pretty cool article for us if you want to check it out you can just google globe and mail edison motors it was a pretty good write-up but anyways, there we go. We got her in here and over the next couple of weeks, they're going to be fine tuning the computer so that the truck works the way we want the truck to work. And while I stayed at Flow Drawlic to dial in the computer, Eric and Dan, the mechanic, headed off to this island out on the Lake Ontario there. Like they had to take an old landing craft just to get there. It's pretty cool. You see, because it's an island, they were running 100% off a diesel generator. So we went in there, we put in a bunch of solar, we put in a big battery bank and we basically made the entire island operate as a hybrid system, kind of like how our truck does. Well guys, it's a beautiful sunny day here in Ontario, a bit windy as well. We're actually out on an island, a farm, uh, which is now running entirely off of solar power behind me here. Pretty exciting stuff. And uh, what's super cool about this project is it's not only solar, it's got a diesel generator as well as a battery system all working together. This is a 21 kilowatt solar array, uh, DC. Uh, this can output roughly about 18 kilowatts directly into our battery bank. 
This farm grower's sorghum and behind me is a generator room which has a 50 kilowatt generator. Two actually as a backup. Now this here is the primary generator for the island and the beauty thing about this system is we're not going away from diesel entirely. This is always going to be a great backup to have and it turns on automatically from our battery bank. Whenever our batteries are low, uh, what we ended up doing is hooking up our battery system into this really nice panel from DSE. And when you put that on auto start, um, our batteries can automatically turn this huge generator on for quick four hours of charging. And inside of this shack, we have 200 kilowatt hours of lead acid batteries. Now what's really cool about this system is it's essentially an electric vehicle battery. Um, this is a high voltage system, uh, which means that we need a pre-charge circuit. We also need to utilize electric vehicle charging systems to allow it to charge, which is why we have all these systems in the back here. What I ended up using is a whole bunch of OBCs, what are currently common. They're called onboard vehicle chargers. And I have a whole bunch in parallel so that it could charge aggressively from the generator into these batteries directly. 400 volts, that's pretty high. What's great about this system too is it's easy to expand. I ended up only using two out of the available six ports for each PV combiner box. This makes it really easy for us to expand the system in the future, which I wouldn't be surprised if we do. So I have five connected together in parallel. This is one individual that is running, running right now. So I have DC. DC amperage. If I just do one, I get 3.1 amps. So all together, with all five working together, I get 16.3 amps. And the battery voltage currently is 379 volts, 383 volts. Every charger is off of a, um, a separate system. And these put out 120 volts each per leg, and there are five of them. So I shut them off individually. Like if I do that right now, only this one, or this one operates. So I could shut every single one of them on. And every single one of them works. We're just wrapping up this project, but what's really cool about this system is that it's high voltage. And this inverter can output up to 50 kilowatts. It's very impressive for its size. Something I'm quite proud about is the installation of a monitoring system. Now this connects up to a tablet or phone. Uh, this one is via Bluetooth, so it's really easy to work with and shouldn't disconnect at all. Uh, but what's great is that I get the same feedback on my phone as well as the owner's phone. Just incredible what technology is available to use. We just finished off a solar project on an island, a farm in on Lake Ontario that was actually at one point 100% diesel powered and now it's running off the sun. And the generator just turned off for the very first time in what might be a 50 year of operation. It's dead quiet out here. It's awesome. There we go. We made some money on our trip over to Ontario. It went pretty good. And after we finished that, we went downtown to Toronto, went to some offices, had some meetings about the business. That was kind of cool. Felt like a big wig having a meeting in an office downtown Toronto. And then we were on a plane flying home. And that was our time in Ontario. We'll be back again in about a week to go see the progress on the truck and meet some potential customers. <laughs>